Hello everybody. Uh, you will notice the scenery has changed a little bit and we have added another person. This is my very good friend Kayla. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about dungeon mastering. Now Kayla, how many times have you been a dungeon master? Zero. That's right folks. We are popping a cherry today on training day. <laughs> about rules. Now, you mentioned in our last episode that knowing what rules you're supposed to use and knowing what you're supposed to do in certain situations is kind of intimidating. In your three DMs, can you think of any time where either you or one of the other players has come up with something where you're like, I don't even know what the rules for that would be? Well, something simple, like uh, we were at the edge of this cliff and we could either go all the way the hell around it and like fight a billion people all the way up, or we could, you know, climb up a cliff. And I know it sounds simple, but I don't know what, if the DM makes up his own rule on what they have to roll for that, or what he decides, like how he decides what happens, and if they miss, or, mm -hmm. you know, like what would you do for that? There are actually rules built into every edition about climbing speed, and what you need to do to get certain areas, and they will have predetermined difficulty classes for doing certain things, like climbing up a wall. Uh, whenever you climb, your climb speed is half of your regular speed. So if you have a speed of six squares in fourth edition, each square is about five feet, so you have a speed of about 30 feet. Uh, if you're climbing up a cliff, you would half that. So half of 30 is 15 or three squares. Yeah. So you'd be able to move up at about three squares every turn. One of the most useful things any DM can do to help alleviate a little bit of the uh, improv aspect of dungeon mastering is learn what an easy check is, a medium check, a difficult check, and an impossible check, what the DC is for that. And you'll find uh, they have a table in the Dungeon Master's Guide. I actually found it on the Wizards of the Coast website through the D&D Insider account. They have the compendium there. And what it does is it breaks it down into, if you're this level, an easy DC would be this number. If you're this level, a medium DC would be this number. By learning what an easy, medium, and hard skill check, uh, what those levels are, you can use that to uh, make it a little bit easier for you to kind of go with the flow. Most of the rules are going to be in the player's handbook and in the dungeon master's guide. Uh, the player's handbook will give the rules that most of the players will need to know. This is how movement works. This is, you know, in fourth edition, you have a standard action, a minor action, and a move action. You know, those things will be in the player's handbook, and most players will know that, uh, and you'll just be expected to know that because that's how Dungeons & Dragons work. The more advanced rules you will find in the various Dungeon Master's guides. Yes, familiarize yourself with the rules. Um, it can create issues between you and your players if the players know the rules better than you. But as long as you're confident and you uh, can come up with explanations as to why you think certain things should happen, just memorizing or having the table of easy, medium, difficult, impossible skill challenge checks will make your life as a DM a lot easier. And like I said, they have a table for it. It's absolutely fantastic. I found it on Wizards of the Coast website, and it's really, really simple and easy. I will have a link to it in the doobly-doo below. Off the top of your head, can you think of a rule that might come up in a game that you're DMing uh, that you don't know the answer to right now? By how much does water slow your speed? Okay, so we can do that. This is the D&D Compendium. Um, it's a little bit hard to see on the screen. I'll uh, do a screenshot to it, hopefully if I can figure that out. And we actually just go right up here, and we're going to type in swimming. And we're going to click search. When we search for swimming, it automatically brought up athletics as well. So it told us to go here. In order to swim, if it's in a calm water, you need to make uh, a 10 athletics check. 
If it's rough water, you need to make a 15 athletics check. If it's stormy water, you need to make a 20 athletics check. So it basically halves your speed when you're swimming. And then towards the bottom it says improvising with athletics. So uh, it talks about um, have, hanging onto a wagon while being dragged behind it would be a hard difficulty class. So again, the compendium in the Dungeons Master's Guide is going to reference itself a lot, but it's going to give you a lot of different options so that you can kind of make your own judgment during your game. As far as rules in general, how comfortable are you feeling now as opposed to when we started? A lot more comfortable now that I know there's a source I can go to. That, um, like, you know, before when I would just watch the DM behind his little, you know, wall of mystery, I didn't realize how much information he had behind there. But now that I know, I can just type in any question I have and I'll pretty much get an answer. I, it, it makes it a lot easier. What would be your advice? Like, you have a brand new dungeon master's coming to you about advice about rules specifically. Mm -hmm. What, in your opinion, is the most important thing for you to know about rules in general when dungeon mastering? The best thing, in my opinion, to have if you're going to DM is to have either a book with you that you can flip through or to have a DD and d Insider account where you can um, just type in your question or the thing you're looking for and you don't have to spend hours thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And then as far as, is there any prep work that you think you might... Lots of prep work, yeah. I would spend um, a couple hours, depending on how long you're going to be DMing for, an hour for each hour of play. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all for me, and I will see you at the next training session. Bye.